I've already preached on the subject of the ten minutes before the rapture. In this talk, I discussed how, for some reason, when I was very young in the faith, I used to imagine that ten minutes before the rapture, the sky would become black in the middle of the day, the sun would make the sky to seem apocalyptic, the winds would begin to blow wildly, and then a massive meteor shower would take over the skies. Everyone will be looking up to the sky, watching the meteor shower fall to earth, and there will be a massive earthquake that will rock the world's foundations. Ten minutes before the rapture, the seas would begin to roar, the lightning would begin to flash violently, and everyone would realize something significant was about to occur. In this talk, I went on to remark that I once heard a guy declare, I will live the life I want to live, and then, right before the rapture, I will alter my life. But I want to underline one point, how will you know when the rapture will occur? This is why it is critical to live each day as though the Lord Jesus Christ will call your name from the heavens. We don't know when the rapture will take place. You do not receive a phone notification informing you that the rapture is about to occur in 10 minutes. It will shock you when you least expect it. You will always be where you are. You'll be there if you frequent strip clubs. If you often sneak out of the home to commit shenanigans, you will always end up where you started. You will be there if you routinely attend church. You will be there if you routinely attend prayer gatherings. Now, I'd like to give a sermon to you today, not ten minutes before the rapture, but ten minutes after the rapture. Ten minutes after the rapture, I pray that everyone hearing me now will be in the presence of the Lord, but the harsh reality is that. Ten minutes after the rapture not all of us will be with the Lord. Even now as I preach, not all who are listening to me are with the Lord. For a few minutes, I want you to consider two groups of people and the terror and the regret that they will feel, ten minutes after the rapture. Group number one. The Christians by name only. There are individuals who claim to be Christians yet haven't actually believed in Christ's name. They go to church, but they are not actually born again. They have a lot of knowledge in their heads, but a lot of hell in their hearts. Imagine how people would feel knowing that the rapture occurred, but they were not caught up, and that the book of Revelation and all of its events are going to occur. The second category of individuals I want you to consider are those, who do not believe in God and adhere to other religions, after seeing that their family members and friends who were sincere followers of Jesus Christ, were correct and are now gone. I am sure there will be a church service like no other after the catching up of the saints happens, I am sure even those in the world who thought that Christians, who used to talk and speak about the rapture, who thought we were crazy, will realize that they were right. The world looked at Noah as if he was crazy when he preached about the flood. The world made fun of him when he told them there is coming a flood. How many people were saved in the days of Noah when the flood came? Come on, now. How many? Eight, only eight were saved. Now, think of the millions of people who were on the earth at that time. Only eight, not even 0.001% of the world's population fit within the ark out of all the millions of people on the planet at the time. So, dear brothers and sisters, how many do you believe will be saved when the rapture occurs? How many are there? Now, when it comes to the rapture, some people are terrified of it or are concerned about it because they are unsure if they will be caught up. They are afraid of falling into the first category of people I mentioned, but I want to encourage you.
The rapture is an event you should look forward to. Don't fear whether you are saved or not. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Because, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. The Spirit bears testimony that you are born again, therefore you know you are saved. You know you've been saved because your life has changed, is changing, and is still changing. You're starting to look less and less like your former self and more like a disciple of Jesus. Don't be afraid of the rapture. I'm looking forward to it. How can you not be excited about it? How can you not be excited about heaven? Allow me to be completely honest for a moment. This world is a shambles. It's a complete shambles. In this world, joy never lasts and this world has strange ways of shocking you. This world is in chaos, and nothing lasts forever. Even the most wonderful, most glorious marriages of this earth, still end with death. Even the most wonderful marriage still ends with one of the two being heartbroken when the other one dies. But, when the Lord Jesus comes and claims his church, there will be no more death. Imagine that living a life where there is no death. Look forward to the rapture, because after the rapture, there is no more death. I've seen families weep bitter tears, and I've seen families cry bitter tears. Pastors see things that others don't normally get to see. Time and time again, I have witnessed families experience genuine grief, heartache, and sadness when a loved one passes away. But I want to encourage you to look forward to the rapture and the return of the Lord. When I'm riding my motorcycle and the sun is blazing down on me, I think to myself. What if he shows up right now? That is our hope, our blessed hope. I'll bike for hours at a time, anticipating his arrival. That is our hope, our blessed hope. The Lord Jesus Christ might come at any time and proclaim our names, and we shall leave this world. Look forward to it, friend, for when he comes, all of our sufferings will be gone for good. Look forward to his coming, my friend, for when he comes, you will never have to worry about your health again. Humanity has been plagued by illness, and disease has stalked humanity. Sickness may take over your life even if you are young and fit. But there will be no more disease in an instant, in the blink of an eye and in an instantaneous moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 and 52 Behold! I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Jesus said, I will come back and bring you into myself, that where I am, you may be too. The angel said, This same Jesus, which is carried up from you into heaven, shall return in the same manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. There is no set date for the rapture. 
It will be the most unexpected occurrence ever witnessed on the planet. It will happen in an instant. The rapture will be announced by the archangel's trumpet. The dead in Christ will hear it and be raised to life in a glorious body. They will be permitted a supernatural transition to meet the Lord in the heavens as a result of this. For a child of God the graveyard is not final. What if the rapture takes place tomorrow? Will you be left behind, or will you be able to catch up with the saints? The amazing thing about the rapture is that the one who comes to gather the Christians is the shepherd himself. The shepherd who understands the status of each and every person's heart. This demonstrates the magnitude of the rapture event. A prophet is not sent to gather the saints. Moses was the one who was sent to free Israel's children from Egyptian captivity. Joshua was the one who led Israel's children into the promised land. Time and time again, we witness the Lord use prophets to carry out His will. But the rapture of the saints is beyond the pay grade of a prophet. The Bible says the Lord Himself, not even an angel, but the Lord Himself. Time and time again, in the Word of God, we see angels sent on behalf of the Lord completing tasks. On the behalf of the Lord, but the rapture of the saints is something that is beyond them. The Bible record reads, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 to 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. The Lord Jesus knows who are His, and those who are not His. He is the one who will come collect the saints, so I ask you again. What if the rapture happens tomorrow?